Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We're going to have a great show for you today, as usual. Michael Rudnan, persistent sore throat and cough. Antibiotics didn't remedy. If it's viral, it's not going to be remedied by antibiotics, but some sort of antiviral and time trying to find a ear, nose, and throat specialist that takes my insurance. Nearest ones are in another borough. Damn, meaning I have to risk a subway ride. Tired of this runaround and that healthcare in the U.S. It has in-network nonsense rather than just picking the closest doctor of the specialization you need and going there. That is what we talk about. Look, you are a real time, a real case. And even though this, it's not the subject of our show today, folks, I want to, I want to make your real story, uh, Michael. Welcome aboard, Paul Fleming. Welcome aboard. I want to make your story, just like we did with Paul Fleming's story, the state of our healthcare system. Because the only reason, the only reason that you are going through the hell that you're going through right now, one reason only, and that is because it is a for-profit system trying to make money as a third party. Meaning insurance companies, they go up and they pick we are a society who profit on the backs of others. I'm not saying profit is wrong or anything like that. But the type of profits that health insurance companies do, it's, it's what I call the evil type of profiteering. Because look at, in order to create a healthcare market in a capitalist system, you have to go through that issue that you're going through, Michael Rudnan. You have to find a doctor in network. That doctor in network may have had to make a deal with insurance company A that doesn't have anything or know anything about your vicinity. So all they know, all they see are numbers. All they see is numbers. It's not hell. It's an annoyance, but I'm not the only one having such problems, and I know that. And no, it is hell. If you are in another country, if you're in another country where you can just go to the neighborhood doctor that's qualified, it would be a different situation altogether. So let's not sugarcoat it. This, and, and by the way, this isn't a hit on, well, you know, some people are going to say, well, aren't, isn't that Obamacare or whatever? That's not the point. That is not the point. We should not have the healthcare system, the lousy healthcare system that we have in America. We should have a Medicare for all system where you are birth, uh, from the time you are birth till the time that you die, you have healthcare. All of us, it's not free health care, it's health care that we all pay for based on our ability to pay. That's what society means, that's what a humane society would do. Anyhow, welcome aboard Bridge MCP, Paul Fleming and Michael Rudnan, the first three that have made themselves known on, on our chat. Okay, Breed says, Michael, hate to say this, but ER take insurance. Egberto, what a rally. Yes, I saw that uh, I saw that virus spreader, that coronavirus spreader that he just that he's having in North Carolina. Irresponsible, but you know, let's see how many of those people at that rally dies before he gets uh, before he gets whipped in the election. Or rather, should I say, before he gets slaughtered. In the election. Anyway, title of the show today. Title of the show today. Dangerous Conspiracy Theory. Senators drive Democratic message using Scottus hearing. Scottus means Supreme Court of the United States. Texas voter suppression fight. And we have one here in Egberto. 1G, please. Kosmovich from Kosmovich from Tweet. Or rather, from Twitch. Come on, man. Not two eggs. You don't want to call me with two eggs. I try not to splatter those things on my head too often. Hola, como estas, Kosmovich? Great. Anyhow, so Democrats made great use of the Scottish uh, nominee herein to drive their message. Will conspiracy and voter suppression be enough for Trump? I don't think so. I don't think so. But... Hey, so what are we covering? We have four major subjects, and then we'll let you dictate where we go from there, as usual. This is your show. Always remember that. 
Um, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse decimates Trump and Cornyn for uh, using Amy uh, Coney Barrett to, uh, Barrett to kill the Affordable Care Act. Número uno, Uruguay, South America. Estás en Uruguay. Me gusta los uruguayenos. Oh, no, no. ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Uruguayense? No, no recuerdo cómo se dice eso. Anyhow, uh, Kamala Harris opening remarks slams the Scottish nominee hearing as a potential virus spreader and an undemocratic usurpation of power. Uruguayos, that's how you say it. Exactly. What can I say? And this conspiracy theory infecting some in America can infect an election. And lastly, in Harris County, the biggest county in Texas, most populous county, we have a young, uh, secre not secretary, what do they call it? young clerk? He is doing a marvelous job, and he was interviewed on MSNBC. We're going to play that as well, pieces of it, that is. Chris Hollins, Texas Harris County clerk, fights Republican voter suppression in his Democratic county. He proves young, strong leaders are the future. Not the ones that are scaring, uh, scared of those people who are using the machine to continuously control, but young folk that know what they're doing. Anyhow, let's go ahead and get started with Senator Sheldon Whitehouse. I Let me tell you why I'm playing these things, okay? Uh, a, a lot of these things occur, and I, I kind of cut some of the spaces out of it so that it'll be uh, more pleasurable to watch. Uh, but a lot of these hear hearings that you have it's long drawn out boring but there are segments that are very very important for people to hear and the problem is that most people turn on the hearing they see this ah oh boring i'm gone goodbye and i think as part of the independent media our responsibility is to filter that stuff and present it in a manner that you guys can say you know what I'm not going to watch it, but I know Politics Done Right is going to cover enough of it that I will be made aware, as opposed to mainstream media covering almost none of it. So uh, I hope you understand why I'm going to play this, why we do this, etc., etc., etc. So here is uh, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse. Before the ACA, patients like me experienced times when they would come up against a life-threatening wall, not in treatment, but in the annual or lifetime caps on coverage, insurers were allowed to impose. I can't imagine what this would have meant for me, bankruptcy or worse. Laura's not alone. We're in the midst of a relentless, deadly health crisis that Trump has botched, which touches nearly everyone in this country. Americans are dying by the hundreds of thousands. Our economy is down 10 million jobs. Despite all the warnings, at all the desperate pleas for help, people on the front line, health care workers, teachers, first responders, police officers, countless others, still struggle for the resources they need. More and more small businesses are closing for good. Many hospitals teeter at the edge of insolvency. Rhode Island, like so many other states, faces cruel fiscal challenges brought on by this pandemic. Since May, the House has passed two major COVID relief bills to tackle unemployment insurance, aid to the front lines, help to small business, support for hospitals, support for states and localities, and plenty more. Mitch McConnell's Senate Republicans won't budge. No urgency, he said. But 80 minutes after we learned of Justice Ginsburg's death, Mitch McConnell signaled he would fill this vacancy. The White House chose a replacement three days later. Justice Ginsburg hadn't been buried when the President and Senate Republicans celebrated Judge Barrett's nomination at the White House super spreader event. This was a hypocritical tire squealing 180 for many Republican colleagues. When they blocked Merrick Garland, we heard nonstop about the importance before an election of the American people weighing in at the ballot box. Nonstop that you shouldn't have a nominee appointed to the court after the primary season had begun. Well, now, with Americans voting right now in the general election, we get this mad slapdash rush. Why? Look at the Supreme Court calendar. 
exactly one week after the election on November 10th, the Supreme Court is going to hear California v. Texas, a constitutional challenge to the ACA. It survived its last challenge by one vote. If the new challenge succeeds with a new justice, the case will tear out the ACA, the law on which over 20 million Americans rely for health insurance, through which 17 million Americans access Medicaid coverage, under which 129 million Americans get pre-existing conditions covered, under which millions of seniors enjoy lower drug costs. Gone. And make no mistake, this nominee's signals on the ACA and on respect for the ACA precedent are clear. Clear enough to move her to the top of the big donors list. Just three years ago, she wrote that Chief Justice Roberts pushed the Affordable Care Act beyond its plausible meaning to save the statute. In 2013, she wrote that stare decisis is not a hard and fact rule in the court's constitutional cases, the ACA being a constitutional case. Clear signals that are likely why she's before this committee now. So back to Laura. With stories like Laura's coming in from around the country, why would we rush forward? Well, the answer isn't pretty. There's a promise to big donors that must be kept. When David Koch ran for vice president, he campaigned on getting rid of Medicare and Medicaid. Imagine his fury when Obamacare passed. His groups are spending millions right now on this nomination. Republicans in Congress tried and failed to repeal the ACA more than 70 times. It's in the Republican Party platform for justices to reverse the ACA decision. Trump has over and over said this is his reason. And now we're in this mad rush to meet the November 10th argument deadline. And colleagues pretend this isn't about the ACA. <laughs> right. The travel of the ACA case leads to one senator's doorstep. In a Politico article yesterday, the senior senator from Texas tried to say that this rush process isn't targeting the ACA. But look at the record. The district judge in Texas who struck down the ACA in the case, now headed for the court, is a former aide to the senator, who's become what the Texas Tribune calls the favorite for Texas Republicans seeking big judicial wins like torpedoing the ACA. The senior senator from Texas introduced in committee the circuit court judge who wrote the decision on appeal, striking down the ACA. Senator Cornyn has filed brief after brief arguing for striking down the ACA. He led the failed Senate charge to repeal the ACA in 2017. He said, I've introduced and co-sponsored 27 bills to repeal all, to repeal or defund Obamacare and have voted to do so at every opportunity. And now, talking about socialized medicine, the old Republican battle cry against Medicare, Senator Cornyn and all of our colleagues on this committee are pushing to get this nominee on by November 10th. The time needed to strike down the Affordable Care Act. Please don't tell us this isn't about the Affordable Care Act. From Cornyn judge to Cornyn judge to this nominee, hop, hop, hop. When Texans lose their ACA health care protections, hop, 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 to see whose doorstep it's on. Lost in this hypocritical rush is the legacy of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Let me close by remembering her for a minute in this unseemly charade. She fought for equality, equity, and dignity. She forged a path for women in the law, to Harvard Law School, to the pinnacle of legal academia, to the apex of legal advocacy, and on to the Supreme Court, where she defended women's reproductive rights, Gonzalez v. Carhartt, the rights of workers, Ledbetter v. Goodyear Tire and Rubber, Voting rights, Shelby County v. Holder. The rights of immigrants, Homeland Security v. Regents. And countless other freedoms. In her work, she bent the arc of the moral universe toward justice for all Americans. How fitting that she should be the first woman to lie in state in our United States Capitol. As to this charade, big donors may love it, but Americans see what's going on. They see this ugly, hasty, hypocritical power grab, and they know what it means for their health care in the midst of a pandemic. For Republicans, there is no washing your hands of responsibility for the results that your president has told us will ensue. We spend a lot that is so important what he talked about. And I want to, this stuff was so well orchestrated. 
Okay, let's see. Uh, Bridge says, I sent you a message. Electoral college and judges like ACB. Who has... Who... Yeah, I know. I didn't, I didn't see it specifically. I got to look for it. But it's amazing. The three... The trio are now there. Roberts... Uh, ACB, and who is the third one, uh, Bridge? I forgot who the third one was. Was it Alito uh, that actually worked on the, the getting Bush, you know, Bush v. Gore? Remember that Bush v. Gore taken? Well, anyhow, so you know, you know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, um, let me tell you how well orchestrated. What I really admired with the way the Democrats ran that uh, Scotus nominee uh, session yesterday, the hearing is how coordinated they were. I, I want you to understand what uh, White House did there. Texas is a participant in the suit to get the, to get the Supreme Court to throw out the entire ACA on several, what I think is called severability, meaning, well, since the, since the mandate has gone to zero, uh, that means that the, uh, the law cannot stand, it cannot be severed, and therefore should be kicked out completely. That's what Texas is doing. And who is the senator from Texas that has attempted to get rid of Obamacare for the last, for over 27 times? Cornyn. Who is in a very big battle in Texas and could lose? Cornyn. Okay? So here we have this orchestration of Democrats saying, you know, we are going to play this exactly right. Remember, Cornyn wants ACB on the courts. In other words, he wants Justice Barrett on the court to fulfill what he has been trying to do for a, such a long time. What is interesting is here in Texas, he's kind of backing away from it. When he's campaigning here in Texas, he's no longer talking about, let's repeal Obamacare. He's no longer wanting to do any of that. He's acting as if, oh, and by the way, I don't agree with Trump on all these things. Trump has, you know, Trump has not been a very good president here. It's a different Cornyn trying to, to hold on as best he can to the seat here in Texas. And what we're hoping is Hager take care of business and get him to hell out of being this Texas senator. Because what he has done is by having the law written in such a manner, he has murdered many of his Texas citizens by being, or he was an accomplice. And I'm going to, because he couldn't write the law and he's not in the Texas state legislature. He is an accomplice. Kavanaugh, thank you very much, uh, MCP. I mean, uh, Bridge MCP. Uh, he is an accomplice to the Texas legislature. The Republican Texas legislature that is responsible for the death of tens of thousands of Texans. And these are, these, are, these are the way we need to start talking about these issues. As we campaign here in Texas, Texas is running, I mean, it, people are voting like crazy. As we approach those lines that are beyond the 100 meters where we can talk to people, we have to make sure and let them know, remember, the current government of Texas has killed your cousin, your relatives, your friends by not giving them the insurance that we as Texans are already paying for. We have to get that message out. And folks, more than anything else, please remember, go ahead and vote. If you have not yet voted, please, if, if your state has early voting, please go vote early. Please call your friends, your acquaintance who you know will vote the appropriate way and notice I, I'm saying that outrightly. People who are going to vote for the betterment of Americans, for the betterment of Texans, for the betterment of, uh, of everybody else, please get them to the polls. If they need a ride, find a way to get a ride for them. But we have to win this thing. Texas is about to flip. And we can do it actually this cycle. The, the, the lines that are forming out here with Democrats... We can actually do it this cycle. So please, uh, the, tr the, the polls are correct, but they have to be realized. Remember that. The polls are correct. We are absolutely leading by a bunch. But what we cannot, but it only will be realized is if we who have told the pollsters how we're voting or who we want, 
if we go out there and execute the vote. You know, a lot of people are saying, Egberto, don't be telling people that uh, don't be telling people that we are ahead because then they're not going to vote. No, if they don't, you, you see, we have to we have to treat people like the intelligent beings that they are. I don't. If the polls say it's going to be a landslide, the only way it's going to be a landslide is if you still execute the vote. We have to let people be adults, mature. Let's leave the childlessness, child, child, childish stuff for the right. The people who believe in QAnon and all that kind of stuff. Let's leave that for those people. All those people that believe in QAnon, all those people that funnel Donald Trump as he kills them with his, as he pollutes them with coronavirus, as he brings them into into the fold. You know, a lot of these people, their mother may be home with a cold, their father may be homesick, their aunt may have been going to work, and they go to one of Trump's rallies. And Trump is saying, oh, it's easy. Look, I got over the virus. I am strong. You are. You can be strong too. You can get over the virus. All these things that he's doing out there, he's killing people. He's killing people. And they take it home. They don't have Trump's health care. And the little that they have, he is trying to take away. The little that he has, he's trying to take away. So folks, let's go ahead and listen to our Kamala Harris. I want you to listen to this entire one as well, please, because she also uh, was very good in, in talking about what this Supreme Court justice means. But not only that, using this platform to put across what the democratic message, the correct message, the progressive message is supposed to be. So let's check that out and take it on the other side. This hearing has brought together more than 50 people to sit inside of a closed door room for hours while our nation is facing a deadly airborne virus. This committee has ignored common sense requests to keep people safe, including not requiring testing for all members despite a coronavirus outbreak among senators of this very committee. By contrast, in response to this recent Senate outbreak, the leaders of Senate Republicans rightly postponed business on the Senate floor this week to protect the health and safety of senators and staff. Mr. Chairman, for the same reasons, this hearing should have been postponed. The decision to hold this hearing now is reckless and places facilities workers, janitorial staff, and congressional aides and Capitol Police at risk. Not to mention that while tens of millions of Americans are struggling to pay their bills, the Senate should be prioritizing coronavirus relief and providing financial support to those families. The American people need to, to have help to make rent or their mortgage payment. We should provide financial assistance to those who have lost their job and help parents put food on the table. Small businesses need help, as do the cities, towns, and hospitals that this crisis has pushed to the brink. The House bill would help families and small businesses get through this crisis. But Senate Republicans have not lifted a finger for 150 days, which is how long that bill has been here in the Senate, um, to move the bill. Yet, this committee is determined to rush a Supreme Court confirmation hearing through in just 16 days. Senate Republicans have made it crystal clear that rushing a Supreme Court nomination is more important than helping and supporting the American people who are suffering from a deadly pandemic and a devastating economic crisis. Their priorities are not the American people's priorities. But for the moment, Senate Republicans hold the majority in the Senate and determine the schedule. So here we are. The Constitution of the United States entrusts the Senate with the solemn duty to carefully consider nominations for lifetime appointments to the United States Supreme Court. Yet the Senate majority is rushing this process and jamming President Trump's nominee through the Senate while people are actually voting just 22 days before the end of the election. More than 9 million Americans have already voted, and millions more will vote while this illegitimate committee process is underway. A clear majority of Americans want whomever wins this election to fill this seat. And my Republican colleagues know that. 
Yet, they are deliberately defying the will of the people in their attempt to roll back the rights and protections provided under the Affordable Care Act. And let's remember, in 2017, President Trump and congressional Republicans repeatedly tried to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. But remember, people from all walks of life spoke out and demanded Republicans stop trying to take away the American people's health care. Republicans finally realized that the Affordable Care Act is too popular to repeal in Congress. So now they are trying to bypass the will of the voters and have the Supreme Court do their dirty work. That's why President Trump promised to only nominate judges who will get rid of the Affordable Care Act. This administration, with the support of Senate Republicans, will be in front of the Supreme Court on November 10th to argue that the entire Affordable Care Act should be struck down. That's in 29 days that that'll happen. And that's a big reason why Senate Republicans are rushing this process. They are trying to get a justice onto the court in time to ensure they can strip away the protections of the Affordable Care Act. And if they succeed, it will result in millions of people losing access to health care at the worst possible time in the middle of a pandemic. 23 million Americans could lose their health insurance altogether. If they succeed, they will eliminate protections for 135 million Americans with pre-existing conditions like diabetes and asthma, heart disease, or cancer. A list that now will include over 7 million Americans who have contracted COVID-19. Insurance companies could deny you coverage or could sell you a plan that won't pay a dime toward treating anything related to your pre-existing condition. If the Affordable Care Act is struck down, you will have to once again pay for things like mammograms and cancer screenings and birth control. Seniors will pay more for prescription drugs and young adults will be kicked off of their parents' plans. And these are not abstract issues. We need to be clear about how overturning the Affordable Care Act will impact the people we all represent. For example, Micah was 11 years old and she lives in Southern California. So Micah enjoys being a Girl Scout and ice skating and reading and eating pasta and baking. Her mother says the only reason Micah is able to live her life as she does now is because the Affordable Care Act guarantees that her health insurance cannot deny her coverage or limit her care because it's too expensive. You see, Micah has a congenital heart defect. She goes to multiple specialists throughout the year and gets an MRI with anesthesia every six months. At just 11 months old, Micah's family had already hit $50,000 in medical expenses, and her biannual MRI cost were $15,000 a session. And so, correction, she, by, by 11 months old, her family had hit $500,000 in medical expenses. If Republicans succeed in striking down the Affordable Care Act, insurance companies will be able to deny coverage for children with serious conditions. Children like Micah. And parents, well, they'll be on their own. No one should face financial ruin to get their child or their spouse or their parent the care they need. And no family should be kept from seeing a doctor or getting treatment because an insurance company says that the treatment is too expensive. In America, access to health care should not be determined based on how much money you have. Health care and access to health care should be a right. Micah and millions of others who are protected by the Affordable Care Act know this is fundamentally what is at stake with this Supreme Court nomination. And of course, there's more at stake. Throughout our history, Americans have brought cases to the United States Supreme Court in our ongoing fight for civil rights, human rights, and equal justice. Decisions like Brown versus Board of Education, which opened up educational opportunities for black boys and girls, Roe versus Wade, which recognized a woman's right to control her own body. Loving v. Virginia and Obergefell v. Hodges, which recognized that love is love and that marriage equality is the law of the land. 
The United States Supreme Court is often the last refuge for equal justice when our constitutional rights are being violated. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg devoted her life to fight for equal justice, and she defended the Constitution. She advocated for human rights and equality. She stood up for the rights of women. She protected workers. She fought for the rights of consumers against big corporations. She supported LGBTQ rights, and she did so much more. But now, her legacy and the rights she fought so hard to protect are in jeopardy. By replacing Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg with someone who will undo her legacy, President Trump is attempting to roll back Americans' rights for decades to come. Every American must understand that with this nomination, equal justice under law is at stake. Our voting rights are at stake. Workers' rights are at stake. Consumer rights are at stake. The right to a safe and legal abortion is at stake. And holding corporations accountable is at stake. And again, there's so much more. So, Mr. Chairman, I do believe this hearing is a clear attempt to jam through a Supreme Court nominee who will take health care away from millions of people during a deadly pandemic that has already killed more than 214,000 Americans. I believe we must listen to our constituents and protect their access to health care and wait to confirm a new Supreme Court justice until after Americans decide who they want in the White House. Until Americans decide who they want in the White House. Anyhow, so um, it, 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 I, what I love is that there was a coordinated effort with all the speeches by Democrats and hers excelled as well as uh, White House, uh, Sheldon Whitehouse excelled in putting the message out. Let's see, why does this woman ACV have no empathy? None. It is because she has money. Listen to listens to her man or just an a <laughs> um, Why don't we just call it what it is, Bridge MCP? Likely all three. Anyhow, folks, thank you so kindly for watching. Um, listen, uh, this is a point in the show where I do a two minutes pitch, okay? And this two minute pitch is to say, please become a subscriber of Politics Done Right. That is how we can keep independent media going forward. If you're on YouTube, please go ahead and click that join button. If you click join and join us now, I will give you your kudos right here on air. And, uh, and, and when I play it at KPFT or wherever I play it, but anyhow, if you're not on YouTube right now, you can just, I just entered the link where you can actually go ahead and click on it to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to have a lot of gotchas, give me's, all that good stuff there when we do that. Uh, let's see. Tim White says, if the Cheeto is so convinced he's going to win, why are they... <laughs> <laughs> good one good one tim i love that i love that anyway those of you who are on 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 other platforms you can become a member at, on youtube by that link that i just entered into the uh into the live chat uh alternatively you can become a patron we need a lot of patrons as well uh here's the link it is politicsdoneright.com slash patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n politicsdoneright.com slash patreon P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Likewise, you can provide support via PayPal. That is politicsdoneright.com slash PayPal. Politicsdoneright.com slash PayPal. Please uh, consider getting, actually I'm going to say, please go get our book. The new book is It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors. And you can get it at this link, which is our uh, Amazon link directly to the book. Uh, if you buy it at Amazon, of course, you can rate it at Amazon as well. But alternatively, if you want a, a uh, autographed copy of the book, you can buy it directly from our store, which is at politicsdoneright.com slash store. Again, that is politicsdoneright.com slash store, where you can get our book. What is it called again? It's worth it. 
how to talk to your right wing, uh, right wing relatives, friends, and neighbors. But you know what? I have other books that I've written as well. The 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 real one. The the what I like to say. The the real the book that talks about. An economy the way you'd want it as well? It's this one here. As I see it, class warfare, the only resort to right-wing doom. This was the first political book I wrote. This one here is an important one, especially for our times. And, of course, you guys know I've had my weight problems in the past. This is how I licked it. Lose weight and be fit now. I did it my way. You will do it your way, and I give you advice on how to do it your way. Anyhow, we are going to get back. Oh, I don't. I don't have the, the, yesterday I was showing people what else they could get at the store, right? So I was showing my cup and Bridge says, Egberto, stop showing the damn cup. Show us a mask. I'm going to show you the mask as soon as I get those in. Those should be coming in anytime, anytime in the next few days, I hope. But yeah, there are, there's a masks and t-shirts and all that kind of good stuff out there. So check out our store, politicsdoneright.com slash store politicsdoneright.com slash store. Okay, let's get back to the program. Um, let me first salute all the great people in here. Bridge MCP, welcome aboard. Daniel Lado, welcome aboard. E, no, that's me. <laughs> uh, Bridge MCP, welcome aboard. Tim White, welcome aboard. Paul Fleming, welcome aboard. Uh, Tank28, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see, who else am I missing? Who else am I missing? I'm going up the line. I'm going, man, you guys have a lot of messages and trying to kind of pick that out of the message. Sometimes it's difficult. So bear with me. If I missed you, forgive me. Janet Duffy Graver, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see, Kian Mass. Kosmovich, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see who else is here. Uh, Kosmovich, call me Egg. Come on, Kosmovich. Okay, let's see. I see I got some new messages under there. Ha ha, sorry. <laughs> okay, folks, let's go ahead and continue with the program. As you guys know, there has there's been a lot of conspiracies, there have been a lot of conspiracies going on. And if you want to see the not just the genesis of a conspiracy, but how it metastasizes, uh, MSNBC had a reporter out there that did a report that I want you to I, I did some cuts out of it for you to see. You can see the whole thing. Likely at their msnbc.com site. But I just did some slices that I thought were relevant. I want you to check this out, and then we'll take it on the other side. I mean, the, 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 we have got to talk to our people. We have got to show some love to people. We have got to show people that they have places to fall, that they have places that they can be, so that those people that are abusing them, making money from out of their fears, confusing them, so that they don't have to go there. I mean, when I saw this thing, I wanted to cry. Check this out. In the battle for Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh is key. Voters in the suburbs here could tip the state. Chloe Neely is a 29-year-old mom of two. She spends weekends on the soccer sidelines. When COVID hit, her waitressing hours were cut back. That's when she started spending more time online. Most mornings, she spends about 20 minutes reading in. I have like a group on Facebook that they like post um, mm -hmm. different articles. Her feed is filled with links to pages and pages of unsubstantiated QAnon theories. Along with nearly a million others, she subscribes to a Q-themed YouTube show. Explain to me who Q is. Well, I believe it's like a group of um, you know, several people um, that were, you know, either in the military, intelligence, or no. Um, a good bit. They'll tell you about like the dumbs, okay, about um, the deep underground military bases. Deep underground military bases where? In this country? Oh yeah, everywhere. They're everywhere. They're worldwide. Um, and it's crazy to think about because, you know, not everybody really knows. A Pentagon spokesperson says while there are a few underground military bases, it is not true that they are everywhere all over the world, nor that people don't know about them. Some QAnon beliefs are even more extreme and completely false. Do you believe in this idea that there is a ring of Democrats who support pedophilia, child trafficking? I don't believe it's just Democrats. I believe it's Republicans, too. I mean, 
um, you know, judges, uh, police officers. Um, to be clear, who, know, are in, who are involved in yeah. our government, who are involved in child trafficking. Oh, yeah. Rights. Oh, yeah. Chloe broke down talking go. about unsubstantiated photos and videos she's seen discussed in Q forums. I want to know what those tours are about. It is about the kids, and it's bad. She believes President Trump is the hero in this story. Do you believe that the president is stopping child trafficking rings, pedophile rings? Yes, I do. Is there anything that you I want to stop? I want to stop it there for a particular reason because I, I see somebody says, "Oh, she's crazy" and all that kind of stuff, and uh, she 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 fell into the trap. That's what happened. She fell into the trap. And these traps are very effective. And the reason I, I, the, the, I'm going to play the rest in a minute, but I want to say something because we have a tendency, those of us who are progressives, have a tendency to believe this stuff uh, is a, a right-wing thing only, that this, this crazy thing can only infect people on the right wing. Welcome aboard, Squido and Gracie Allen. But here's what I want to tell you. When she was talking about the places that she went to, and you know, a lot of people just hear the talking and they don't analyze what the person is saying, right? And part of what I've said in my book, it's worth it, how to talk to your right-wing uh, relatives. I, I, that, that is sort of a catchy, catchy name for a book. But the reality is how to talk to people that think differently or that you know are misled. And people can be misled on the right, on the left, on the ev everywhere. And the reason I'm saying this is when she's going through the list of places that she goes. One of the places she talked about was Daily Coast. Daily Coast is a very progressive site that I am a contributing editor to. And it's a site where you can be a contributing editor or you can have blogs that you write at that site as well. She also, when, when queried about, so who do you think these people are? She says, Democrats, Republicans, all... So, to her, it wasn't about party or, or right or left either. And who did she say was the savior then? Donald Trump. And you said, are you crazy? That's what a lot of people would say. But my thing is, I think it more points to a failure of right, left, and civics. And a bit more, right? Because there are people that are susceptible to cues. And those, of, those people who listen to, let's say, myself or, or TYT or these other things, some of the people who listen are also susceptible, just as susceptible. Good for them that they are listening to a source that that's to, to, to most of us are credible. But suppose they got to a source that wasn't, but that gave the semblance of credibility. The semblance of credibility. It can happen to many. Most of you here are strong. Most of you here are strong in your beliefs. You know, you know reality, your reality base. One of the things that I talk about in my book that I think it's important is all of us that know better, uh, somehow, for the people just don't have the patience to do it. But for those who can, the only way we save society at large, and I'm talking our country and all of that, because this stuff can metastasize, is if we start, th this young lady is only 29 years old. She's, an age, she's my daughter's age. She's only 29 years old. And we don't want somebody that is fixed in that mentality at 29. She has so many more years to live. So, that is why, and, and I understand that, Michael, you hear something crazy that can't be real, fact check it, but you are schooled. You are schooled, and you know how to research on your own, and you were taught not to necessarily believe in what uh, the news tell you or otherwise, but to try to get independent sourcing. Most of our guys here, our women and men, our brothers and sisters here, you can but remember where some of these people live, how some of these people grew up. They don't have what you had. So what I'm trying to do here is not just, oh, look at her, laugh at her. I want to go to that woman, talk to her, and give her a hug and say, hey, could you at least give me a chance to get to you? Give me a chance to get to talk to you. 
And that's what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and continue with this and then we'll move on thereafter. There we go. You could hear uh, in the media or from friends that would dissuade you from, from the beliefs that you've outlined? No, there's just too much evidence. There's just too much. When we're living in turbulent times, people often look to conspiracy theories to provide simple explanations for complicated world events. Makes sense of the world. Yeah. Professor Alice Marwick has been researching QAnon for a year. Why is it attractive to suburban moms in particular? Getting involved in something that purports to help children is very appealing to a great deal of women. It's not just women, though. Chloe first found Q through her friend John Pope. A week and a half after losing his job hosting karaoke at a bar because of the COVID shutdown, he says he found QAnon and now spends 13 hours a day online. We've all been lied to. Remember, everybody's been lied to about everything, okay? He believes in a range yeah. of conspiracy theories about a satanic cult trafficking children, the Titanic, 9-11, and thinks Q may be John F. Kennedy Jr. Do you believe that JFK Jr. is alive? Uh, something in my heart tells me yes. I believe that um, JFK Jr. could unite this country together. Except that he died in a plane crash, in a plane yeah, that, that he was what piloting. They say. That's what I said. Like I said, I believe in my heart that JFK Jr. is still alive. I, I just don't think this whole QAnon movement wouldn't have been possible had it not been for JFK. How many of your friends in the Pittsburgh suburbs do you think are, are into Q also? Um, I mean, a lot. Do you feel like this is your family now? Yes, absolutely. I don't think the people involved in QAnon are stupid. I don't think they're gullible or any of the other stereotypes. I think they generally reject mass media. They reject a lot of things that you and I might think of as true. But what this means is that we're starting to see a real schism in this country between what different groups of people think of as true. Now look, the psychologist is partially wrong. Uh, they, are, they are gullible. They are gullible. There are a lot of gullible people. A lot of people would fall for anything. But let me address uh, Ledo first of all. Ledo. Uh, left a comment says, laughing his you-know-what off. Egberto, the guy who has been duped for three years by the Trump-Russian collusion hoax, is now lecturing us on conspiracy theories. Sorry, Egberto has zero credibility. The Russian collusion stuff was no hoax. I mean, the, the paperwork... You know, the, the funny thing about it is this, Ledo. If you take the time to read the document, you would see... That the thing about it is collusion isn't something that, that's into law. You can see the relationship between the president and the Russians and Russian oligarchs. All of that is written. But it is the Justice Department who is responsible for moving that forward. And it is Congress who is responsible for impeaching on the wrongdoings. I mean, it's not a matter of... I fell, I, it's a collusion hoax. It was not a collusion. And the thing about it is while people don't have QAnon evidence or wh whatever those crazy things are about, you can go to the document that was put out by the Republican uh, Republican Department of, uh, not Department of State, the, the Department of Justice. You can see it. If you are interested in not just listening to Fox News, you can pick up that 400-page report and read it like many of us did. It is all there. So please do that before you make comments that are pretty darn silly. I hate to say it, but pretty darn silly. Okay, so go ahead and read the document. Then come back and let's have a conversation. Okay, um... I am right now in Texas, the Republican, uh, the, the, from the governor right back the, the, to the Republican Party, they're really trying, they're scared to death. And the reason they're scared to death is because Texans are starting to vote. And we've never seen voting like this before. Now, a lot of people say, well, we have to make sure what we're not doing is cannibalizing the day of, the day of uh, election day people. And we are cannibalizing election day people. In other words, a lot of people not going to wait for election day. How are we going to know that? If we make sure that the voting, the pre-election day voting exceeds what would have been there on election day, we can actually feel a positive feeling. And I think that is where we're going. First day, 
more than double our best day in 2016. So let's go ahead and remember that. But we have a young clerk here in Harris County that he is finding every possible way to make sure that voting is easy. This is what our representatives are supposed to do. Now, it's funny because while in Texas, we are trying to take away voting uh, drop boxes and the Republicans are saying, oh, that is dangerous. That can be manipulated. It's ironic that in California, not the state, but the Republican Party is putting drop boxes all over the place. And we don't know what they're going to do as far as the collection of the ballots in those drop boxes are going to be. And I don't hear, I don't remember hearing too many Republicans say, hey, that is dangerous. That could be manipulated because there are enough tra track backs on these ballots so that people can know, one, was their ballot received? Two, is your ballot being processed? So those, those are, well, you know what they are. They, they make no sense. But check out our Chris Hollins and how he's taking care of Harris County. With me now from Texas is Chris Hollins. He's the Harris County clerk. Harris County, uh, Chris, has a lot of Democratic voters. Uh, the, this judge apparently just tossed out this uh, rule that the governor was trying to institute that there, there could be only one ballot uh, drop-off location. There's been a back and forth in the courts over this. Uh, is this the ruling now that's going to stand? Will there be more ballot drop-off locations in Harris County? Well, we don't know if there's any end to this litigation, to be totally frank with you. And so for now, we're making sure that the single location that we do have uh, is accommodating for voters. We've expanded the, uh, the capacity for that voting location. But we know that this act of voter suppression by the governor should not stand. Uh, a county like Harris County, which is the size of Rhode Island, uh, who has 39 drop-off locations, by the way, shouldn't be li limited to a single one. Uh, so that's wrong, and we're continuing to fight. You know, I knew it was a big county. I didn't realize it was the size of even a small state. Um, are you not allowed to put up more ballot drop-off boxes? I mean, is there is there a stay on this that says that nothing can happen until it's gone all the way through the courts as far, as high up as it as it will go? So as of now, uh, the Fifth Circuit has issued an injunction that that requires us to have a single location. Uh, the, the litigation that you're speaking of uh, just came through moments ago, and so we're working with our legal team to understand the yeah. implications. Uh, but we also want voters to know that you have over 120 voting locations across Harris County, uh, triple the number from 2016, more than ever before. And we're excited that over 300,000 voters have already cast their votes here in Harris County, which is more than the entire state of Georgia, who you just covered a moment ago. Um, there's also drive through balloting. There's curbside ba balloting. Um, talk to me about the ways in which voters can get out in Harris County, even if it's not by, by dropping it off at what is currently just the single drop-off location. Right. Well, we've offered drive through voting uh, for the first time in the history of Texas. Uh, later in a couple of weeks, we're offering a day of 24-hour voting for the first time in the history of Texas. And we're trying to give every single voter uh, every opportunity to cast their ballots and to do so safely and conveniently. And so we're thrilled that so many voters, regardless of their party, are coming out to cast their ballots and have their voices heard this November. What's your, I mean, do you anticipate there to be a, a swing in Texas? Do you anticipate Texas turning blue potentially in this election from what you've seen so far in terms of voter enthusiasm? Well, Texas is certainly the biggest battleground state in this country. And now with 38 electoral votes on the line, uh, the stakes are high. And so there's no uh, you know, reason that we shouldn't expect so many voters to be excited right now. Uh, but we'll wait and we're going to count those votes on Election Day uh, and we'll see who wins. And we will see who wins. And by the way, Bridge MCP, they're already taking legal action. Uh, they have until Thursday, today, to decide what they want to do, whether they're going to remove them or not. And thereafter, the state said they would start uh, the legal process. I, I, actually, I think that is a part of the legal process. I'm not, not exactly sure, but they are taking that into account. They are going to take legal process. But I mean, as it turns out, Republicans are usually wrong and strong, right? They, they'll go out and just do stuff. Democrats think about what does it mean? Is it ethical? Do we need to do this? Should we do this? Uh, Republicans just go do it, right? And what we're saying is in this, in, in our current politics, we are going to have to get people who 
are willing to do that until we get rid of the cancer. And when we get rid of the cancer, go back to a civil modus operandi. In other words, uh, there are times you have to fight hard and nasty, uh, and then uh, you can go back to civility after you have eradicated the disease, right? In other words, if you take a look at how chemotherapy works, chemotherapy goes in there and it lambasts the, uh, the, the, the cells with, with poison. Of course, it has an affin the poison is directional, right? It has an affinity to, uh, to go to the cancer cell, but in the process, it can affect good cells as well. But that's the only way to get rid of the cancer. Sometimes we have to do that. And that is what I think Democrats are going to uh, realize or that's going to do when they take over the Senate, this House, the, the presidency. And, and, and they're going to notice that they're going to have to mitigate all the damage, the undemocratic damage that Republicans have done as a minority party. People have a, a party that received less votes, a party that cannot uh, get legislation through, but somehow want to maintain power. They are going to have to force them to do, or rather not force them, they are going to have to implement what the will of the people, the will of the Americans have told them they want to do. Folks, uh, we are coming to the end of the show. The name of my book, It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right Wing relatives, friends, and neighbors, please go ahead and get it. You can get it at this link that I'm just posting here, the Amazon link. You can get it there. Or if you want to have an autographed copy, any copy that's purchased at our store, I am the one shipping it out, and I autograph it uh, before I ship it out. So that you can get at politicsdoneright.com slash store, politicsdoneright.com slash store, where you can get a whole lot of our other products. If you are on YouTube, please, please click that join button. Please click the join button. Become a member. We are going, you know, we are just building up our YouTube membership right now. We intend to have a whole lot of fun, not only till the election, but after the election, we're going to have things where we bring people in. I mean, it's, it's going to, we have a lot of plans that we're working on, but what we need to do is create that big membership base on YouTube. Please help us do that. Just click that join button. Uh, join the family. And those of you who are not on the YouTube platform right now, I'm going to put a link where, we'll, where you can actually join right here. That is the link. I've just posted it. Uh, politicsdoneright.com slash YouTube. politicsdoneright.com slash YouTube. Provide support via politicsdoneright.com slash PayPal. politicsdoneright.com slash PayPal. Or become a Patreon please do so by going to politicsdoneright.com slash P-A-T-R-E-O-N, politicsdoneright.com slash Patreon. Look, I appreciate you all. I thank you all for being a part of the family. I thank you all for coming out and spending this time with us. We'll continue to do this. Remember, this is only the beginning. Getting back the presidency and the Senate in November, it's only the beginning. We have a lot more to do after we do that. After we get the Senate and the presidency, it's just the beginning. We can only get the presidency and the Senate is if you go out there and vote. And not only think about yourself, but please make sure everybody, make sure everybody go out there and vote. Yes, Rudnan, I, I am sorry. Uh, I will read all the messages after the show. Uh, I will make sure to read all the messages after the show. So, folks, please go out there and vote. Vote and take someone with you. Take five people with you. My name is Egberto Willies. This is Politics Done Right. And you know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.